Hi, this is Mark with your analysis for the week commencing 26th of June. I was away last week, uh, went for a bit of rest and relaxation, so I didn't trade. And when I come back and you look at a chart historically, it all seems so easy. I was talking in terms of looking for a break and a close below 140.300, standard M2 move, pull back to the 140.300 and a fall. However, earlier in the week it went completely the other way. This is not easy and what is happening at the moment on an almost daily basis we are getting changes in direction due to fundamentals and it's not just scheduled news then there's all the chatter going on about the Greek situation and one further thing to really take note of now Bernanke said last week that there would not be any Q3. Last time the quantitative easing stopped the euro plummeted down to 120. Now, on a personal level, I don't believe that the US dollar is in any healthier state than the euro. And I suspect that both current currencies are fundamentally flawed. But at the end of the day, we're talking about market sentiment. And sentiment could well see this get back down to 120 again over the summer. 143 was very important. The next major hurdle is obviously 140. Big hole number, previous support and resistance, psychological level, etc. For me now, for the week ahead, I would be interested, if the euro comes back up to 143, yes, I will be interested to short, but I will be paying close attention to news throughout the week. As I say, it has been going up one minute and down the next. Uh, from other areas of interest, counter trend traders would be interested in 140, personally I wouldn't, but I would be looking for an exit at 140 and slightly above that area as well. This is the pound on a weekly, and the pound broke the all-important 160 that we're looking at, and it's also broken and closed below the 55 EMA, and the bottom Bollinger has opened. And I actually personally prefer the pound at the moment. I know a lot of you don't trade it. The reason I prefer it is that there is room underneath now to go. So for tomorrow, I would be very interested. If we get a pullback all the way up to 160, 040 area I would definitely be looking to short but I will be looking for clues around 160 tomorrow. Aussie dollar said last week that 105 was the all important area and I was showing you how in recent weeks that we'd had so many bounces off here and Monday had the opportunity once again for a decent bounce here that went a few hundred pips. However price has now closed below 1.050 5 8 crosses pointing down, stocks down, everything's pointing down on this boy. Uh, bear in mind this and the euro are very similarly uh, correlated mo most of the time. I think I personally prefer the euro a little. With this one, I wouldn't want just to pull back to 105. I know it goes against the M2 theory. I would be more interested up here. If it comes back up to 10560, and even as far as this top trend line, then I would be interested to short. I do believe it's going to fall, but I'm just not sure on Monday morning whether that's going to be when it's going to do it. This is Euro Pound, and we were looking last week 88.20, and once again, it is the all important area. Monday's candle opened and closed in exactly the same area, fractionally above it. The very next day, the candle came down, touched it, and it stopped at 78.6 fib again up here. Now, the areas for me of interest remain 90. If it gets up here, I would definitely be interested to short, and there will be a ton of orders in there already waiting to short this pair. And longs at the moment, 88.20 once again. Personally, I'm not interested in shorting here because of these other EMAs down below, and the week before, it did seem to stall in this area. So for me, I would be interested to long here, and I would be interested to short here. It is a case at the moment, because of the new situation, I would only be in one trade at a time at the moment, let alone one euro trade. Do not be in more than one euro trade at any one time. Uh, and if you type trade longer time frames, as I say personally, I would only be in one trade at a time. I will be ignoring the Swissy at the moment. Normally, if the euro is falling, the Swissy is going up, and this is not. It is at an all time low in terms of the dollar is at an all time low against the Swissy. I do believe the Swissy will get stronger and therefore this has further to fall. But the only way for me would be on a pullback. Last week I was looking all the way back up at 87. Uh, this EMA has moved down now but anywhere around here. Then later in the week I would be interested to short this pair. This is the CAD. I showed you last week on a weekly chart how we had a never in a million years Bollinger Band. I was saying if price came up to it and the Bollinger stayed close, I would be interested to short. Not now, though. This is the weekly chart for the CAD. We have 
uh, a trend that has formed here going back to the beginning of April. This is another pair. People ask me which currency would they would I put cash into and the Canadian dollar is definitely a pair I would be interested in over and above the euro, the dollar, uh, even the Swiss franc. The Canadian economy is reasonably strong. They're sitting on a lot of natural resources. It's a well-run economy and things are doing well there. They have avoided most of what's gone in the rest of the world. However, this then brings an opportunity in here. A lot of people will be looking at 100 as a possible short and I will certainly have a look there. But because we're, fact we're now in an uptrend that's been going on the weeklies for the last few months, there is a danger this is going to go further. Now, how do you look at this? Well, you look at this, if you were thinking of changing monies into Canadian dollar, you would be looking at this as an opportunity. So, first area of interest is obviously here, uh, but I have a feeling this could have further to fly. Dollar yen. I am going to ignore the dollar yen for the foreseeable future. This is just untradeable for me at the moment. It's up one minute down the next and it just keeps stopping at 80 where it's clearly happy. There is on the daily a potential triangle break brewing. So I think the best way to play this is wait for a breakout. Uh, personally, I wouldn't be interested in a long, but if price was to get back up here, then I might be interested for a short. But it's messy, guys. The easiest solution is walk away. Euro yen last week worked perfectly. I was talking in terms of a pullback up here, uh, and it did, and it went back down again. Now, I would only be interested to short this pair. Triangle breakout suggests this has got many, many hundreds of pips further to go. I will be interested if we get back up around the 115.50 again, and I would need my stop above this uh, daily EMA here, and this weekly one now, I believe, will have moved. Yeah, it's moved slightly down. Uh, I'll have a look in the morning because it will have moved some more. But anywhere around here for entry and stop up here, I would be interested. Dollar yen, I, Aussie dollar yen, I am less interested in this now. I was showing you last week how the upper area of 8800 was the important one. If it gets back up here, yes, I would be interested to short. But the problem now is we are coming down to this trend line and you would therefore be thinking in terms of the bounce. Because the dollar yen's not doing anything and because there's a good possibility of some uh, US dollar strength this week. This could make this very messy as well. Best advice is leave it alone. It's sat down here on this bottom of this triangle area again. And the other reason why I'm going to leave it alone is that this 200 EMA is only 50 odd pips below. Uh, we've got the 3458 cross. Lots of reasons to suggest it is going to fall. And again, if we were to come all the way back up here on the daily, say 8550 area with the EMAs, etc., then yes, I would be interested. And we may eventually get a break below the 200. The more conservative amongst you wait for that. You wait for price to break and close below the 200 and then for a short. This is very interesting. I'm showing you gold in recent weeks. Gold had broken a daily weekly trend line here that went back to the beginning of the year. It finally broke this 1513 the other day, which has been very important in recent weeks. What's it done? Just to tease us once again, it's now closed fractionally above the all-important 1500. It does look as though it's going to fall. And once again, is if you are thinking of the long term and you want to get involved in gold, you may well get an opportunity in coming weeks. Uh, if you're new to gold, I would sit and wait and see what happens. It would be far more interesting if we get a 50% pullback. And certainly if we were getting down here, and gold can plummet and shoot up very, very quickly. So for now, just sit on the fence and wait, and we'll start to analyze if and when it gets down here around 1400. This is silver. Silver has now broken. I'm showing you in a recent video how I was buying silver. Silver has now broken and closed below another weekly daily trend line. And look how important this line has been. It held, 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 and it even held again on Thursday. Finally, Friday, it's broken through. I am looking to buy more silver, as I have explained in recent weeks. I have a nice cushion, so I, for me, it's not as important for the entry. I am looking this long term. Long term, I believe that the, the dollar is going to tank. Long term, I do believe that the euro is screwed, and I therefore don't want my money in those currencies. So, silver for me, I have an order it to buy down here. Again, this could go further, guys, and if it gets back down to 30, that would be a very good opportunity if you are interested to get into silver. Catch you later.